$7 an hour part-time. We had just bought a house. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Tori Mathis, your host, and I'm here with the one and only Sean Mathis, founder of Miles Through Time Automotive Museum. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, one of Sean and I's biggest pet peeves is when people complain about their job, yet have but take no action to fix it. Both of us have had jobs that were crappy. Both of us have had clients that are crappy, and I think that's just part of life. That's just part of, you know, what's going to happen, you know, uh, being in the workforce, you might end up with a job or a boss that you don't like and being an entrepreneur, you, you're probably going to end up with clients that you don't like. It happens. There's days of your life that you're not going to like uh, and you can fix those, you know, could you imagine you know, getting yourself in some sort of rut that you're just, you, you absolutely are miserable and you do nothing to change it. So you just day after day, you're miserable. I mean, and people do that with their jobs. They, they go Monday through Friday or whatever their schedule is, and they bitch and they complain, but they go every time, which is great. You know, they're not quitters in that sense, but you've got options, and that's what people don't realize. Like, you don't have to just do that. And I wonder if that's what it is, if either they don't think that they have options, maybe that's what's going on, or that they think that this is what life is supposed to be like. Because I hear these people like, who was it? Somebody said something about another day, another dollar, or Monday again. Thank God it's Friday. Like, it's almost like they feel that life is supposed to be that way. And I completely disagree. Like, life is not supposed to be a constant drag on awful thing. And if your life is like that, like, you can make changes. It should be interesting. You know, if going to your job is that drab and you just you're not finding any joy in it uh, I, we're not saying you know, quit your don't job. show up or do any of that but look for options man. like there are a ton of different jobs out there if you just want a different job if you want to try something on your own you know f focus on that where you're trying to build your own business on the side uh, you know until one day you can go in and quit that job but you, you don't have to put the energy into bitching about the job that you have now because you got to pay bills focus that energy on creating that that new whatever it is that's exciting and, and is is going to bring you joy you know and sean was even told when we moved like in order for us to move across the country um, after Sean got out of the military, we were able to move wherever we wanted. And so we followed some of Sean's family that went to the East Coast. So we came um, this way. Uh, and Sean had to go through a couple of crappy jobs just to kind of get us over and to get us like where we needed to be. It happens. Like I've done the same thing. I've had a couple of crappy jobs. And he was told by people, by someone specific, that you should, you need to get a job and stay there because people won't hire you if you've changed jobs. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I mean, what do you want me to do? Like, I'm not going to stay there and be miserable. I, 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 one job, it sucked. It wasn't for me. The other one, I actually, like, it was completely outside the scope of things. It was actually his pest service. Uh, something I have really zero interest in, but I have a management degree and, and I, you know, I wanted to utilize some of the skills that I have, I've learned. And I thought that I could bring, you know, from even my deputy days on, and being a police officer. So I was like, all right, I'll start at the bottom. I'll learn the ropes and I'm going to try to go and become a manager and, and go up the ladder and, and do all these things to, you know, rather than staying at the bottom. So although I didn't really enjoy the job or that current position, I looked forward as of doing more and more. And it just, you know, the more I learned about the job, the company, the next position, it, it was not going to be for me. And as soon as I realized that, I was out again. And that was okay, though, that you decided that wasn't for you. I, I wouldn't have expected you to stick with it just because you shouldn't switch jobs or you should be scared of switching jobs. Like, switch jobs, go find something else. There's so many jobs out there, whether it's in your town or somewhere else, like online, there's all kinds of virtual type things. Like there's so many opportunities out there um, that if you start looking around and trying to you know, figure something else out, it totally is possible. 
it's so easy nowadays. Like it's almost like it, when it comes to cars, I'll research cars all day long, every day with no intention to ever buy them. I just, I'm curious. I want to know what they go for, what I could potentially get, you know, all these different things uh, because it's so readily available to me. And the job market is the same way. I mean, you can go to Indeed or whatever it is, ZipRecruiter, it, it really doesn't matter. And just look, I mean, what is it you want to do? Where do you want to go? Just keep putting them out there. Don't quit your job and live on unemployment and run your bills up and all that looking for jobs because it might take a while. I mean, when I looked for jobs, I was not finding the stuff that I really wanted to do, but it didn't deter me from actually trying. So just think of it as like a bridge job. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. It's a bridge job, but then you're also you're you're hunting, right? You are hunting for that that next level job position, whatever it is you want to do. And when it when it happens, you know, rejoice in that. But in the meantime, don't don't just put your head down and think that, you know, what your current situation is, is going to be the end all because there's no excuse for that anymore. Like it's so easy. You, you live in North Carolina and you want to find a job in Montana. You can do that without having to move to Montana or do it like you you can find a job like it's possible. Uh, so, I mean, I, I don't understand the mentality of just like, oh, I, I can't do anything and this job sucks. And, you know, if you want to start your own business, that's even better. I mean, that's easier. There's so many different resources out there for you to do that kind of thing. Uh, you're miserable at your job, you know, start spending your weekends and your time off and start building something of your own. And eventually it's going to work or it's not going to work. And that's okay. It is. And try something else. I mean, at least your mind, your time and your mind is occupied on doing something that is good for your brain and your mental health. I mean, because all, if all you're doing is, ah, oh, it's Monday again, you know, I got to go do this job and put the hours in and I'm miserable and I hate my boss and all the people around me. Uh, and like, it's contagious too, because now you're going to make everybody else miserable. You got family, a spouse, kid, like that. It's going to suck for everyone. And you don't have to do that to yourself or your loved ones. Yeah, and I think part of it is kind of knowing what you want. Because if you don't actually sit down and figure out what you want, and you, I, I think anybody can like have these goals and go for what you want, go for whatever job it is, whatever, uh, if you want to have your own business. But knowing what you want is what's going to allow you to say, okay, this is a bridge job and I'm going somewhere else. And I think that's a good way to always be is like figuring out what the next step is, where you want to go. Because if you're not pointed in one direction, like you can't really go anywhere. Um, when I was in college, I ended up getting a job at AT&T and it started out as a website content collector, um, which meant that I, because I was going to school for advertising, so I was kind of working in design. Um, it was when websites, like normal, like there, people had websites, but like regular businesses were just starting to get them. So AT&T was actually um, in their like yellow page type things. They were actually reaching out to their clients and being like, hey, we'll design a website for you. You'll have it up in like whatever time. So I was the person that contacted the businesses and got the, all of their content together. Well, they ended up ditching the um, after I worked there a couple months they ended up ditching the whole entire department that was doing that and they were gonna move it somewhere else but I had been filling in for a girl doing data entry and so they offered me the job for data entry making a lot more money than they gave it to me for the website content collection and I ended up finding a job uh, that was about an hour away from my house, about 45 minutes, an hour. It was a good drive. It was a drive. Um, and so like AT&T wanted to pay me like $23, $24 an hour to do data entry. Now, it's back uh, in 05, 06? Yeah, it would have been 06. Um, and so I could have took the data entry position at the $23, or I found this job on Craigslist <laughs> that was way the hell away. I forgot it was Craigslist. Part Man. time production assistant for a real estate magazine. And I was like, holy shit, like that is what I need to do. $7 an hour part time. We had just bought a house. <laughs> That's but, crazy. Like we figured out like, could we swing it? Like, would it work? And you know, I was spending all this time going to college, spending all this money going to college and 
I, I needed to be in the field that I was doing. Like I, I knew what the next step was. I needed to go that way. And the AT&T thing didn't work out. And when I told them no, they actually offered me another dollar an hour. I was like, <laughs> but I didn't do it. It was the wrong job. It was not going in my north. It, it was not going in the direction I wanted to do. Sure, I could have made a lot more money. I might have even been able to work my way up and been a data entry person. I'm not data entry, though I feel like I do data entry. <laughs> you know, I'm a business owner, so I do a little bit of everything now. So like, that's great that I had that experience. I took that experience and you know, I still have that to this day that I can do those types of things. Um, I'm an Excel master, you know, from that kind of stuff. And that's fine that I got that experience. But my next job wasn't like, I don't know, you only worked at AT&T for X amount of months and then you decided to move. I don't think you're a good candidate. No, like I knew the direction I was supposed to be going in. And because we had talked about it, because I knew what, where I wanted to go, I knew that job wasn't for me. So I quit the very expensive job and took the hour away job for seven dollars an hour part-time and it was a it was a huge inconvenience it took up a lot more time we did not make as much money at all i was still going to college like i was still trying to um do it but i think it was a fantastic decision that we made it sucked at the time but I ended up working my way up at the publishing house. I ended up becoming assistant publisher. Um, a lot of the skills that I learned at that job were about uh, job costing and printing and how to um, work out things with clients. I really started dealing with clients because I had worked in small businesses before, but I had always been administration and I only did things, even for the army, I did admin. So I actually just helped out the people that were actually doing the job. I never did the job. You know what I mean? I was always the help. So that was like my first time that I was actually doing the job. I was actually working with the clients and making them happy and, you know, figuring out that whole kind of thing. And because I took that incredibly crazy ass leap to do that, it gave me skills that it, I don't think if I would have did that, and went and worked at the magazine, I don't know if I would have went down that entrepreneurial journey. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's really no telling at this point. Because mm -mm. uh, I remember, like, it's not like you set out to go be a business owner or any Never. of that kind of stuff when you graduate. Like, your degree is, I tell people, it's like, she should be working in a skyscraper in New York. I mean, that's that's what the degree is. That's is. what they're all doing. Yep. Um, and yet, you took a $7 an hour job. Part-time. Uh, for a small magazine company, yeah. uh, a, a niche company, you know, that didn't survive the housing market crash. Yeah, because the real estate market crashed and all of our clients were realtors, um, a lot of them went away at that time. Um, and eventually the publishing house went away um, and I, I became an entrepreneur from that. Now, though, you had to take the $7 an hour job but relatively quickly, you did make it to where you're making five grand a month, which that was huge for us at that time. Uh, right, right, you know, right before the housing <laughs> market, it didn't last long. No, uh, but it was—I mean, that was good money for was. for us at that point in our our lives. And I think part of that is because it was where I was supposed to be, and because I knew that that was the direction, like. You know, when I got out of the army, they said uh, they would rehabilitate me because I broke my hip and I had to get out. Um, they would give me this uh, uh, vocational rehabilitation program. I had to give them my GI Bill and they would pay for all of my college, for everything for me to be, you know, uh, rehabilitated. Um, but I had to do what they said I was going to do. And they said commercial design. So, like, I, that was the direction I had to go. So I knew that was the direction. They would have been pissed if I would have spent all of their money and I would have got a data entry job at AT&T. Like, that would have been a huge failure for, you know, $150,000 education. <laughs> and and I do data entry for AT&T. Like, that, that would have been bad. And you would have been the person then that complained about going in going work. in on Monday, but you know what? Twenty four dollars an hour, seven dollars an hour, like that's a huge difference. And I can see that that would sway people. That that would, I mean, that swayed us too. That dollar but. amount puts blinders on people. I mean, and it is so easy. I'm not not susceptible to it myself. I mean, it's you start getting money thrown at you, and 
you know, it's hard to turn it down, especially, you know, if your bills are a certain amount, your li living situation requires something specific. But, and but we what's did that it. worth? We did it, though. We held on to Sean's jobs that were not the right ones because of health insurance. That was our worry. Like, we have young kids. We need health insurance. For whatever reason, we can't get it on our own. It'll be too expensive. And we kind of looked into, you know what? We figured it out. We kind of got, like like me, you know, uh, getting shoved into entrepreneurship. Sean did too. He hurt his back and, you know, wasn't able to work at his, you know, corporate job anymore. Well, beyond the health insurance, like just, you know, the mental uh, concept of losing a steady paycheck, one that, you know, I know for a fact, no matter what, whether, you know, we lose clients or gain clients, like I'm getting paid every week. Uh, on top of insurance, right? So the the mental process I had to go through to eliminate that, whether we needed it or not, you know, it's it, that doesn't even matter. It's the fact that, you know, that's no longer there. Then it's like, well, do I bring that much value to Tori's business to even justify me doing that? And the thing is, is it, it, it isn't about the money. You know, our lifestyle is so much more improved now uh, that I don't go... To any kind of job and we talked about it in another episode that it is possible very possible that sean could go work somewhere else and work his way up and make more money than he's making right now i've been offered three i think three different jobs just in the in the automotive world since starting miles through time that i could easily just hang up the towel there on on the nonprofit that we started and you know, hang up the towel with working with Tori in, in her business, wouldn't be doing this anymore, uh, and I would just be an employee for somebody else. You know, probably making good money, um, and I'd probably enjoy it even, but our lifestyle would never be the same. I mean, it's just we wouldn't be able to do the things that we do, and for me, family is more important than, you know, being able to say I make $100,000 an hour or uh, not an hour, but shit, that would be awesome, a, a year, uh, but I work 60 hours a week and I commute two hours a day uh, and I and I see the kids, you know, 40 minutes a day before they go, like that sounds absolutely miserable to me. It's our, like the kids grow up fast. I mean, it, it, the, our daughter, she went from pudgy cheeks to <laughs> super long. <laughs> And like, it, what's weird is I didn't see it happen. It just like all of a sudden something like, holy shit, she's not little anymore. When did that happen? I'll tell you, it happened during quarantine. I don't know what she was eating, but they got out of school in March and then we didn't buy them like nice shoes because they weren't going anywhere. So they wore like flip flops and stuff. And then in the fall when they had to go back to school, she was two sizes of shoe bigger. Quarantine did something. It turned yeah. our little pudgy baby into like this. See, and that's me. That's, Amazon. that's seeing her every day for hours, and and still it was like a all of a sudden type thing that I couldn't imagine not being there as much and having that kind of ha thing I think, happen. I think part of that too is knowing the season of your life, and I think that our parents, that generation, was more, and maybe even like your older brother. Um, more of that, like you stay at one job, you get a pension, you work super hard, you you know, grind, 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 and do all these things. You put in, you work for the man. You know, you don't even like your job. Um, you don't like the company, but that's what you do because that's what you're supposed to do. And then when you retire, then you get to woohoo, do all this stuff. Sean and I talked about it. Like that's not the life that we want. And so talking about like what season you are in your life, when before we had kids and when I first started having my own business, um, I worked a shit ton. I worked on weekends. Sean worked weekends. So I worked weekends. I worked late because Sean worked until what, like seven at night or whatever. So yeah. I worked late. I didn't have kids. And so that was the season that I did that. When the kids were really little, again, I worked nights because they were up all day. Sean worked nights for some of the time. Sean had long shifts. And so in that season, that's what I did. But now, 
that's not like I want to be around the kids as much as possible. So again, like knowing what that North Star is for us, like at you know when I was in college, it was that I need to be in the right field. In this season, it's I need to do what I can to spend as much time with the kids, still make money. Like obviously, I want to make you know enough money, but I need that free time and, and flexibility. And now we need that free time and flexibility so that Sean can build miles through time. It, it's. But if we didn't have those discussions and know that that was what we were going for, man, we'd still be sitting in North Carolina with, you know, Sean working at a pest company, trying to be management because that's what he's supposed to do. I hate Monday. <laughs> I mean, with that, you could back it up to where we'd still be in Idaho or we'd, we'd still, still be, be in, in California. California. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, when we lived in California and I worked for Pepsi, I became so efficient at my job that it became extremely boring. Great paying job, great job. You know, the whole retirement thing, like I, I, there was nowhere to move up in my department anytime soon. Um, But eventually, you know, obviously I I would have. But even then, like, would it have been worth it? I I doubt it. Um, I I knew how much my boss made (laughs) versus how much I made. I'm like, what is the point of that even? Uh, And so, you know, I, I, I started thinking, like, what else can I do? I was, I, I was finishing my degree, so I knew that was coming. So I wanted to utilize that, and so we made the decision that you know I'm going to leave Pepsi, and we're going to move out of the state. Well, we just had our first kid, and so again, like our direction was Sean's, you know, needs to be able to use his degree and do something that's mentally stimulating for him, not just the same crappy job. And it it wasn't a crappy job. It was just not for Sean. I mean, it was actually a pretty cush job and, and, you know. You're not a cush job guy, though. I got (laughs) a brother that was, like, thought it was the dumbest thing in the world leaving it. And to me, I'm like, you know, I... I rode that roller coaster. I'm I'm ready to get off. I don't know if they'll ever forgive you for leaving that job. I think it'll always be like a, a stain on on you. How do you ever you say that? You know what I mean? Like I, I don't think that and some people won't understand those kinds of things, but we knew that like that job wasn't for Sean and we knew that we didn't want to stay in California. We didn't want to raise our kids there. We wanted something different. And we left. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they would pay now, but let's let's say maybe I'd be making maybe twenty five, twenty six bucks an hour doing just driving around, fixing this stuff. It, it sounds awful to me, even to this day. Like I don't want to do that anymore. Uh, but I mean, and the thing is, is like for some people, that's fantastic. For some people, they would absolutely enjoy doing that kind of stuff. And that's the thing is everybody is so different that you don't have to get caught up on this. Well, we all need to think the same way and and move like Tori and I, we are both the same mentality as far as wanting to conquer, learn, conquer and and go to the next level and, and go to the next level. You know, not that nothing is enough. It's just that like when we've had enough, I want more. You know, and there's no there's no scale to measure that as far as, you know, it's never going to be enough. I don't know that. All I know is once I'm bored with something, I want to try something new or different and harder or whatever the case may right. be. Or when that season of life changes, like once the kids got to be a little bit big, like when our kids were really small, we had an opportunity to go live on a lake. We found the most beautiful million dollar house, little teeny tiny town. The kids were, like, Bella was in kindergarten. Like, the kids were so small that it really didn't matter too much that we just went for two years and enjoyed ourselves on the lake because that was the season. Once the kids got to an age that, like, we really need to think about, like, school district and where we want to be and and try to stay in the same place, we moved again. And it wasn't because, you know, for that sense, it wasn't like, oh, we're bored, that we were done with the lake. It was like, okay, we're done with this season. (laughs) Like, where are we going? What's our new North Star? We could have said, oh, we shouldn't move because moving is bad, even though I don't like it here anymore. And that's what people are doing with their jobs. Like, ah, I don't like this job, but I feel like I have to stay in it. And so if you're happy in your job or you're happy with your clients, then yay, that's great. But if you're not, like, you can change it. You can change jobs. We've changed jobs. We've changed states. We've changed cities. We've changed career paths. 
all of these different things in order to get ourselves to that point of, I don't really know what the point is. It's like, we're always just trying to move to that next level and always to, even if our, you know, where we want to go adjust, we're okay with adjusting it. I think that's part of life, not, you know, getting in a rut and staying the same path just because you think you have to stay the same path. And we're constantly altering our everything in our life to fit our current situation. I mean, even just the cars. You know, how many times have we, we've gotten a truck because we needed a truck and we got rid of the truck because we don't need the truck and we needed a big SUV with third row seat, but then we didn't need it anymore. So we got rid of it and we need a commuter car with great gas mileage. And then <laughs> like, we don't need that anymore because the car is too small. So we get something else. I mean, it's the, the list of vehicles is huge and almost all of them were because our lifestyle changed. You know, the commute became irrelevant. longer or shorter or irrelevant or, um, you know, kids. And the very first one was um, I got a, the Mazda Speed 3. And then we had Riley and the car seat wouldn't fit in the back seat. You cannot put a car seat in that thing. And so the car was gone. Yeah, And then that, this, ever since then, man, it's been... Well, it's we been, had to tow a boat and yeah, we didn't have a boat. Yeah. Like, all these things make a big the difference. The travel trailer, you know, there's all kinds of things. And that first time when gas got really expensive, we were we had a Infiniti QX56 that got 15 miles per gallon. And uh, the commute was short at that time, all city. Uh, as gas was expensive, so we got rid of it. <laughs> You know, and we got um, the CX-5 that was great on gas mileage. Tiny little car, wasn't very fun. Now all of a sudden it wasn't big enough. And I mean, you know, it, it, and that's the thing is you just, you make changes to, to fit whatever makes you happy at that time. And I think we're really good at doing that in regards to our clients as well, because you know this isn't just for people that have jobby jobs. I think that this is totally relatable for anybody that's an entrepreneur as well. If your clients are starting to be ones that just make you feel icky or you're just not like you, you're starting to wake up and be like, oh, not again, like you are attracting those clients. Like what you put out there is what you're going to get. And so if you are an entrepreneur, you don't have to keep your clients. Um, there has been clients that have come to us that we didn't feel was gonna be a good fit and we have referred them out. Um, we have had clients that just really didn't work out and so we didn't offer certain services or certain packages anymore and we referred them to somebody else. So whether it's your job that you're not happy with or your clients that you're not happy with or your car that you're not happy with, like what's the direction that you want to go and start facing that way so that you can start to make those changes because you can't make changes until you know which direction you want to go and it's okay if that direction changes it should change like we've changed it so many times and i think that's fine you know we're we're figuring stuff out yeah. i think that everybody has the ability to do that it's okay right yeah i mean everyone's heard the phrase you don't know what you don't know I mean, that goes, you know, right in line with all, all of this that we're saying. Like, if you, you may think you like something or want to do something and, and you might not after you, you go. So start over again and do something else. I mean, it, it, you, as long as you keep moving forward, you're, you're good. You know, if you step, if you step back even and, and fall back into something that you've done before, I've done that. You know, it's, it's momentary. It, you, it, it's temporary. You, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff and you start the process over again. Yeah, there's, there's enough things out there, clients, jobs, houses, car, like you don't have to be miserable. No. And, and I think a part of it too, and if we would have done this, it would have been horrible, is listening to what other people said. If, you know, Sean, you should never change jobs. Sean, you have to keep your retirement. You have to worry about pension. What about health insurance? Like, all of these things like you should you can't move while the kids are in school like all these things that people have told us don't get a boat you're stupid <laughs> like like we didn't listen to them and i think listening to people giving you advice like look at what their lifestyle is like look at where they're at it's like all these people that take um financial advice from people that are poor like look at where you're taking the advice from and just because they're family doesn't mean you have to listen to their advice just because they're your friends doesn't mean you have to listen to their advice like I would actually be very picky and choosy on who you choose 
to take advice from. Find some people, even if they're not even people you know. You can read books, you can listen to podcasts, you can watch YouTube videos, like people have shows. Like find those people to be your mentors and people to uh, get advice from that are going in that direction that you wanna go and not with people that, that think they know best for you because that's the decision they've made for them. I would never tell those people that stay there for their retirement that that's the wrong decision for them but I do know it's the wrong decision for us. Yeah, and, and you, you know, leaving your job or, you know, stopping your business or canceling clients, maybe that's not the right option for you either. Uh, but if you're miserable, there's something you've got, like mentally you've got to change something. So maybe you don't change jobs, you don't move away. Maybe you just change your, your mentality, you know, instead of focusing on whatever it is that's bringing you down, you, you focus on what, is good about it and you keep trucking along um, because just being miserable about things like that's that's the problem okay. you, you cannot do that and you don't deserve that nobody deserves that nobody should live a crappy life nobody should you know hate waking up um, and it's 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 not what we want for you it's not what we want for us it's not what we want for our kids and I think the more that people can realize this and try to um, adjust their life to to be what it, they want it to be, um, to go after the goals and the dreams that they want without listening to other people trying to bring them down. I think the better all of us are going to be. The rising tide lifts all boats. We all gotta we all gotta rise up a little bit. It's going to be better for everybody. So if you like this uh, episode, we would appreciate it if you would share it with somebody that may enjoy it. And we will see you on the next one. Thanks. If you want to get smart tools to build your business, go to BeSmartAF.com.